Sweetheart of Swing. Welcome to Stay Tuned, the show for animation lovers, recorded live on YouTube and proudly streaming on Patreon. Coming to you from Austin, Texas, I'm your host, Phil Maki. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Tonight, Stay Tuned welcomes special guest Carrie Means to the show. All that, and you'll have a chance to share your thoughts, questions, and opinions with me for a live Q&A after the show. My special guest tonight is a voice actor best known for his role as Frylock on Aqua Teen Hunger Force. The series followed a giant talking milkshake, ball of meat, and a box of french fries that lived together in suburbia and occasionally attempted to solve mysteries. Most of the time, episodes dealt with disturbing, disturbingly hilarious monsters ridiculous arguments, and the inevitable torture of their neighbor, Carl. The popular show aired on Cartoon Network starting in 2000 under their Adult Swim label in various forms over the course of 15 years, and even led the way to a movie and video game. Carrie Means is here to tell us all about what being number one in the hood is like in just a few moments. But first, this. And here's where I would be playing some music, kitties. But I'm not going to be doing that because, you know, music and copyright and all that. So, Carrie Means, welcome to Stay Tuned. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. I'm glad to have you here. Phil Mackey. It's Mackey or Matchy? Oh, it's actually Maki. Maki. Yeah, it's... Like Macchiato. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Italian, you know. Ah, Italiano. That's right. Hey, well, Amati. <laughs> Mangiano. That's right. Or Mangi, mangi. Mangi means eat, right? Mangi, mangi. Means eat. It's a word that I am all too familiar with. <laughs> uh, all right, all right, my, all right. Cool. My entire childhood, that's basically what I was being told was to eat. So, you know. <laughs> um, and, and you listen. I, you know, I, I, I did okay. I'm not too big. <laughs> so I, before we get, you know, too much into it, I, I just wanted to start off by saying, uh, you know, welcome, of course. And then also, I understand that you're a fan of the classics. What was it about Mel Blanc's work on the Looney Tunes that left such an impression on you? Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Hell, yeah, man. That's my pet rabbit. His name is Bugs. He loves carrots. <laughs> you know? So Bugs Bunny left an impression on you. Oh, yeah. Right on. Well, Mel Blanc. Yeah. Mel Blanc, the one who voiced all those voices, man. I mean, come on. Growing up in St. Louis is my hometown. I would uh, watch those cartoons, man. Weaned on them. You know what I'm saying? Bugs yeah. Bunny, Elmer Fudd, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig. But a lot of people don't realize is that Mel Blanc knocked on the Warner Brothers doors for about three years before he even get his foot in the door. They kept slamming the door and they said, you need any voice talent? No, slam. You need any voice talent? No, slam. Finally, the guy who kept slamming the door in his face passed away. The guy who took his place said, come on in, kid, let's see what you got. So, and the first voice he did was not Bugs. It was like a drunken Toreador or Bullfighter or something like that. Or a drunken bull, one of the two, in an old black and white short. Isn't that a great story, how he just persisted and he stuck with it and, and then he became... Yeah, a- he just didn't give up, man. He just kept banging up. You know, I don't, I don't imagine how that would have turned out for me if I banged on Cartoon Network's doors for three years. It probably would have had me arrested after the fourth time I visited the place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, luckily I had a good enough agent that had an in with those folks and yeah. got me to gig. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. My very first voiceover was in 1997, and I had no transportation, no way to get there, so I was like two and a half hours late to the session. Oh, wow. And uh, I was on the other side of town. And I had to get the cab from Sandy Springs to Midtown Atlanta. It cost me a pretty penny, but 
<laughs> like sure. after he was like, oh, don't worry about it. It's okay. I was like, nah, these fools ain't gonna hire me no more, man. I'm not gonna get no more work in this town. And it's for Blockbuster Video. Oh, Why Blockbuster. Why is so cool? Because he shops at Blockbuster Video. Why is Rudolph's nose so red? Because he shops at Blockbuster Video. So I thought that I wasn't gonna get no more work ever in this town. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they called me back, you know, to do more. I was like, wow, this is... Not that I want to make a practice of being late. Right. But it was like, okay. So anyway, my agent had an in with Cartoon Network, and uh, I started doing bumps for Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z. And oh, I think nice. I was the person that told the world about Dra- uh, Goku's death in Dragon Ball Z the first time he died. That's awesome. I was the announcer for Samurai Jack, the first incarnation. That's awesome. How yeah. did you... How the did next you... Samurai Jack, Jack gets into the so that and the other, and a uh, young production assistant by the name of Larry Morris. I know the name so well because I went to high school with a guy with the same name. Who was Italian also, by the way. Hey, look at that. Larry Morris, the guy I went to high school with, right? But he was like a dark-haired, big-nosed Spicoli from Fast Times Original High High. Nice, nice. If you've ever seen that movie. I do, yeah. John Pence's character, Jeff Spicoli. Yeah. That's oh, a- Mr. Han. So he was, he was like, he wasn't a surfer, but he had that mentality, you know what I'm saying? Oh, sure. He brings pet tarantula to, to show and tell the school that this is Juno. He's my pet tarantula. Juno, where'd you go? Anybody seen Juno? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, this guy heard me doing these the Samurai Jack thing, and he ran to Matt Malero and Dave Willis, the co-creators of Aqua Team. He was like, you got to hear this Carrie Means guy. He'd be perfect for the show that you're doing about these food products. So <laughs> my agent, once upon a time, kids, there was something called fax machines. And my agent faxed me a copy of the Rabbit script. Yes. And I'm standing in the, I was standing in the break room of my day job. Let me rewind a little bit. I did have a day job at the time. Right. I worked at a market research firm called okay. Booth Research. I can talk about it now because they're defunct, no okay. longer functioning. But we were the people that would call your house while you're having dinner. Oh, and boy. And ask you about your uh, cable repairman and ask you if in the future do you think everybody have a cell phone? Do you think in 10 years? Somewhat likely? Not at all likely or very unlikely? Oh, my gosh. We had a cable survey that lasted about an hour, man. Then people would hang up on me quite frequently. Believe it. <laughs> Yeah, no well, kidding. It was a cool little gig, though. And it was now looking back on it, we laid the groundwork for a lot of this technology stuff that's going on now. Like live TV, you could pause, rewind, and fast forward live TV. That was in the cable survey. Those questions. Oh, interesting. How likely would it be? Do you think that you would uh, be able to pause, rewind, and fast forward live television in the future? In the future. In the so in the it was far distant. Ten dollars an hour gig. Ten dollars yeah. an hour gig. You know, and I'm standing in the break room with the rabbi script. No, meanwhile, don't get a jam box. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you hear Dave Willis and Matt Malero on a conference call in the background. They're just cracking up, guffawing, laughing uncontrollably. I was like, what is this crap? <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to get this gig. I was like, I'm not going to get this. Forget about it, you know? Yeah. And sure enough, it came down to me and one other guy. Oh, okay. And the other guy was, he didn't have enough life to him. He was boring, too dull. Ah. So I got the gig. Awesome. Well, that yeah. I mean, and, and the rest is history, as they say. Yes, sir. So, a decade and a half later. That's right. You're number one in the hood, G. That's right. You've got a background in theater. Yes. Do you feel like that helped prepare you for voice acting? Absolutely, man. Well, one thing people ask me is, where do they start? And I tell them, start with theater, start with improv, take some acting classes. Absolutely. Do some community theater or college productions, whatever whatever level you're at, do that. Yeah, yeah. Get into improvisation. Go to improv classes. It's fun, you it, know? It is. I Step agree. out of your shell. Yeah, absolutely. Get out of your shell. Read aloud a lot. Read aloud a lot. Read a tube of toothpaste. Read a magazine out loud. Not necessarily on the bus or train or anything, but I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> practice, practice, practice. That's very true. You know, that's one of the things that I was grateful for with that market research job because I read a script every day. You know what I'm saying? I went in there, get put a little headset on, and dial, dial the phone on the dumb terminals, and read from the script. It prepared you. That helped tremendously. Sure. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that because for four years, I worked in technical support over the phone. So uh, I remember thinking to myself, you know, this is probably going to prepare me in some way that I'm not ready or I'm not aware of yet. Absolutely. Yeah. I sang with the Atlanta Opera Chorus. Oh, wow. And the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra Chorus, respectively. Oh, wow. And I've done... Tons of musical theater. I've been on the Fox Theater stage here in Atlanta with uh, Robert Goulet, the likes of Robert Goulet in South Pacific. Robert Goulet and Paige O'Hara. Paige O'Hara was the original voice from Belle. That's right. In the Disney animated version of Beauty and the Beast. That's correct. Yeah. She was quite taken with. She was quite taken with my dulcet tones and said, "Carrie, I love your voice. You got a great voice. Send me a demo oh. to New York to this dress." This is the 90s we're talking here, man. Yeah. So it was like there was no MP3 technology and there was no really 
I didn't have a very good demo cassette tape. Let me put it to you that way. At the time, right. it sucked. And I sent it to her. Never heard nothing back. I felt so dejected. But it was just, it was horrible. It was a horrible demo cassette tape with a few voices on it that I thought was going to get me some work, but never did. Of course, you just mentioned, you know, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And for those people out there who are somehow unaware of that show, you played a large, highly intelligent talking box of French fries. And what was your first impression when you were reading about these characters? Was it, you know, was it confusing? Or? Well, I had a handle on the type of character that he was. Not necessarily what he should sound like, but his personality when my agent described him to me. He said, well, the name says it all pretty much. Frylock, a.k.a. Sherlock. He's the straight man. He's the guy who wants to solve the crime. He yeah. wants to do good. He wants to solve the mystery. And it's just my voice, man. You know, I mean, there's a subtle difference between the way I talk and the way Frylock talks, for example. If you know, there's it's a, a little bit of a difference. It's all about the inflection. It's still me, and I'm still him, and he's still me. Yeah. And so, like you And, did of course, I was Thunder Crease on the Brack Show. Yes, Thundercles. I remember that I very well. I down the street, I blast you. <laughs> the majority of the Aqua Team cast started doing that show on Nickelodeon called Welcome to the Wayne. Have you heard about that one? I have heard about that. What can you tell me about that show? My character's name is Jonah Bishop. He sounds an awfully lot uh, like Frylock. Okay. Dana Snyder's character is a, a pre-adolescent kid who runs around in slippers and a bathrobe and levitates spoons to vampires and his name is Wendell Wasserman. Oh my god. And he looks exactly like a little Dana Snyder. The <laughs> Dana Snyder was a little kid. I mean with the glasses and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a little and a little black afro. Oh my gosh. It's so funny, man. I'll have but to check it out. It was nominated for an Emmy. Welcome to the Wayne is the name of the show. Uh Dave Willis is in it. He does several voices, but mostly he's known as the doorman George. So I was like, Oh, hey, welcome to the Wayne. <laughs> I will have to check it out. That's so, awesome. Yeah, well, it's it might be on Nicktoons now or somewhere floating around in the void because if you look up the IMDb page on it, yeah. it'll say the year it started, which I believe was 2017, July of 2017, okay. last year. That's when it started airing on Nickelodeon. It got nominated for an Emmy, and I haven't done anything with them since February. Oh, <laughs> so, weird. I don't know what's going on. Well, from what I heard to the grapevine is it got a three-season run, and that's it. And I was like, wow. I was hoping to get some SpongeBob time out of it. I thought it was that good of a show. really did. Wow. It was funny, and we were all in it. I wonder what we happened. We were all in it. I was trying to get the creator's name of it is Billy Lopez. He grew up with his brother, Bobby Lopez, and a whole bunch of other family members watching Aqua Team. Oh, my and gosh. And Bobby Lopez, Bobby Lopez is an award-winning musician, a songwriter who's done stuff for Frozen, uh, Avenue Q. Probably, you know, any other Disney movie that came out recently, he's like a musical coordinator for Disney that's and uh, awesome. amongst other things. So that's his brother, Bobby. Billy had this idea for a web show, and he was such a big fan of Akatine. He's like, this is what he told me. He said to himself, one day I'm going to have a show, and I'm going to have all the Akatines in it. And I'd be damned if he didn't do it. With the exception of the late, great Clay Croker, by the way, who's yes. the voice of Dr. Weird and Steve and Zorak yeah. and Moltar, and this goes on. I miss Clay. We were good friends. He was a hell of an artist, man. Yeah, he was. You know? And he died mysteriously. I don't know the exact cause of his death, but I got a theory, but I won't even go into that. But he's been gone a couple of years now, but I still miss him. He was a cool guy, and we got along great. And I hate to say this, but Adult Swim didn't really treat him all that well. That's all I have to say about that, a la Forrest Gump. That's all I have to say about that. That's right. Did you know, I don't want to bad mouth anybody. I love those folks over there. I love to do some more stuff with them. Yeah. And I miss doing Firelock, and maybe one day they'll bring them back, or bring the Aqua Teens back, or whatever. But yeah, just talking about Clay, man, he, uh, I think he had agoraphobia where he didn't want to leave his house because I've invited oh. him like to barbecues and stuff like that at my place. And like one Memorial Day, I invited him out to a barbecue at my house, and he just kept coming up with these excuses. I got a friend who's in town celebrating her birthday, and I was like, "Bring him over." He didn't know who said, "What's better on your birthday than free barbecue?" Right, right. And then I found out from a mutual friend. This guy I've known him for like thirty some odd years. I think his name is Stephen Pope. He's an artist, okay, as well. Shout out to Stage, Steve. How you doing? <laughs> and uh, he said, I've known Clay for 30 years, man. He's a, he's a gorfo. He doesn't like to leave his house. But if you come over to his house, he holds court. You know, the king is in his court. You know, he's, it's hard for you to leave. Sure. He wouldn't want you to leave. You come over there, hang out with him. And he just holds court in his house. And I was like, that kind of makes sense. Aside from going to the occasional con like Dragon Con or Myrtle Beach, 
the one he, he and Bob Camp used to go to, I know him as well. As a matter of fact, if you look on YouTube, you can find a video clip of myself, Clay, and Bob Camp, the co-creator Ren and Stimpy. Oh, yeah. Singing the theme song from the Super Chicken TV show from the 60s. Oh, that's awesome. I'll have to look that up. Bob knows all the lyrics. By the time we got to the second verse, me and Clay were just going blah, 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 blah. Super Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That, and that's it was awesome. filmed, and it was filmed by Frank Frazetta's one of Frank Frazetta's granddaughters oh, on wow. the iPhone. Oh, that's so cool, <laughs> man! That, that, that's yeah, a, that was the VIP area at Dragon Con back in 2015. That is VIP sounding right that, there. That was when I met Bob Cam. That's a good friend of mine as well. He's a cool dude. He's a very cool dude. I had him. Uh, he signed my uh, Red and Stimpy hoodie a few years ago when I met him up in Michigan. So I'm I'm just curious, uh, how much riffing or like ad lib did they allow when you were working on Aqua Teen? 40% is about ad libbing, man. 40%? You know? Wow. You could tell. I'm sure you could tell. I mean, Some a little bit. stuff was not scripted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that's inter- like, it's interesting because you were on that show for over 130 episodes. I mean, that's... Oh, over 200. 200, I'm sorry, yes. So... Yeah, that's two hundred plus episodes, and then a movie, the movie and the video game. Yeah, the video game, exactly. Oh yeah, I got a T-shirt that says uh, "No More in the Hood" for a decade and a half, and on the back it has all the shows didn't last as long as Aqua Teen did. Yeah, the you know the list is long. It's like Mash, Cheers, Cosby Show, After Mash, all these shows that were on not as long as Aqua Teen was for fifteen and a half years. Yeah, you guys had quite the run. Decade and a half. Yeah. 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. So was recording the movie any different than making an episode? Was it a different experience? It was just like a long episode to me. Yeah, okay. It was just like a long episode. Yeah. The most intense part was obviously when Frylock was reminiscing on how they were created. That was my uh, Emmy Award. That was my Academy Award uh, 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 submission there. (laughs) <laughs> well, you know, it was weird. I actually, I actually saw that movie in the theater. I was, well, first of all, the introduction was hilarious. But the other thing I was going to say was the part you're talking about where Frylock was, you know, recounting how they came to be. There's all these different versions. It's such a confusing, strange thing to watch. Was that because they couldn't pick, you know, a, a version or they didn't want to really give a, an origin? What do you think the reason for that was? Wow, you got all analytical on me there, didn't you? Uh, you know... <laughs> Well, how many times did you see this movie? <laughs> uh, just just a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta watch it again to catch all that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I didn't mean yeah, to stump you. Yeah, I gotta watch it again myself to catch all that. With all those little nuances you just threw at me. Well, the, the oh, big boy. I uh, you know you I do my research, man. I, I do my homework. <laughs> I love it when they take Frylock out of his comfort zone you know what i'm saying they show another side of him yes he, he drops like when, when meanwhile wants to cross the street and he's looking at him through the window with the ball gag in his mouth and the s and mask on his face tell me i'm bad yes <laughs> what i didn't like was when they would emasculate him make him a uh, female trapped inside a male's body give him cancer and all his fries fall out and then at the end of that episode you got andrew wk singing the party song and they would cry like a spine all of a sudden yeah, I, t- I definitely remember that. I didn't that. understand a lot of stuff they did. I just showed up and read the script, man. You know what I'm saying? See, I was going to ask you that. Get because... a little direction from D- Matt and Dave. Yeah. Well, do it like this. This is what you mean when you say this. You know what I'm saying? But it's and really... And Dave would go in and do Carl and meet Wide and Nick Nod or whatever. Yeah. Dana is like doing his from like L.A. Oh. And Dave Willis is usually there directing me on the other side of the glass. So we're rarely in the same room unless we're doing a commentary. If you if you ever listen to any of those behind the scenes commentaries. I do. The yeah. first one was pretty boring. But the second one, we kind of were a little lively there. Yeah. Because they had booze at the second one. <laughs> so They I got mean, us liquid up. Wait, oh, okay. <laughs> You mentioned earlier that the show started off as, like, they were trying to solve crimes, but it devolved into some weird surreal... I like thought they were trying to solve crime. It, yeah, it did devolve, if you said that right. I yeah. Think it's... <laughs> <laughs> and they, showed, they started reincarnating Aqua Unit Patrol Squad yeah. 1, Aqua but... Teen Hunger, you know, whatever. Yeah, it, it got... Aqua TV show, show. <laughs> yeah, they keep changing. And then the final incarnation yeah. was... Aqua Teen Hunger Force Forever. Right. They kept yeah, changing that, the title. I don't know why they did that. I think they were trying to get sponsors or something. Oh, okay. They even made a show about Dana flying to L.A. about uh, sponsorship and residuals. They was like, they told the truth. They said, well, the show is only 12 minutes long. So that's why you 
Ted Turner got some hella lawyers. He's they smart over there. Yeah. The show's only 12 minutes long. So if it's any longer, they'd have to get sponsors. Oh, that's true. Then we would talk about residuals, but we can't talk about residuals because I live in Georgia, right to work state. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> See, people think that I'm swimming in royalties from Aquatine. No, no. Still got to work. Somebody sent me a message on Facebook one day and it was like, enjoy those royalties and residuals, my friend. I was like, what? Who? Who are you talking to? I don't get that. Now, wait. Like, now, what? So, you lying. I was like, no, I'm not. So if, if you... I don't get no kickback. You don't get anything from any DVD sales or anything like that? No, sir. Wow. Now, welcome to the Wayne. It's a SAG gig, even though I'm not in SAG. See, it's a sticky wicket. This whole SAG not being in SAG thing. Even though Welcome to the Wayne is a SAG gig. Yeah. And I'm not in SAG because I can't afford a three grand or whatever it is to plop down to get into SAG right now. I just can't. Sure, sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, it was like only a thousand. But, you know, they still, you got monthly. But I always get mail from SAG about my retirement and stuff. It's really strange. Oh, interesting. I'm like, so am I in SAG? No, you're not. <laughs> but here's your retirement package right here. Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. You know, so. Did you Everybody ever... goes, you gotta move to LA. You gotta move to LA. I was like, where am I staying? In your house? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can I crash on your couch for a year? That's right. Until I make it big? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they get silent then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm barely making it in Atlanta. I'm trying to hold on and stay in Atlanta because Atlanta is supposed to be booming. Yeah. With the movies and stuff, you know? But the thing is, we don't realize they really don't cast for major roles in Atlanta. They cast in New York and LA. That's why oh. they cast for the major roles, you know? Oh. So they film in Atlanta. I'd be lucky if I can get some day player gig. I'm trying to at least start off with some day player stuff here. I did just sign up with the People Store here in Atlanta. So. Oh, that's they awesome. They were sending me some, some, some auditions my way. So it's cool. That's awesome. I still have the same agent that got me Frylock, though. She yeah. lives in uh, North Carolina. Oh, cool. That's I mean, that's and, awesome. Uh, she's semi-retired, though, but she still, you know, she sends me checks. You know, that's nice. It's <laughs> nice that you still, yeah, it's nice that you still are in touch with her. That's very, that's great that you still have her as an agent. Oh, I actually brought her in for Welcome to the Wayne. I got that on my own, but I, I called her up and said, hey, I need you to do the agent thing one more time. I got another show. She almost fell out of her seat. She couldn't believe it because a lot of people have left her high and dry oh. like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can do that. If you get a gig on your own, you don't have to tell your agent nothing. Right. You just deal with the people direct and don't worry about no 10%. But I didn't do her like that because she actually got me the gig as Frylock. See, you know, that's awesome. Audition. That's great. So there's a certain amount of loyalty there. You know, I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody told me to get rid of her. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. That's karma, man. Even though she's semi-retired and she don't work like she used to as far as getting me stuff. But yeah. Every now and then, she'll send something my way, an audition or something. You See, know? there you go. She takes so, care you know, of you. That's good. That's awesome. That's why I had to sign up with the people story here. Though. She understands that I have to, to have more than one person represent me. Right. Especially if the person ain't really doing much. But like I said, I can't cut her loose. It's a, it's a loyalty thing. She's my friend and my agent, basically. Absolutely. You know, she is a wise egg, man. She reminds me of E on The Incredibles. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. She's probably about that, that, that height, too. <laughs> <laughs> Rona Burns, the Burns Agency. So any of you kiddies out there looking for representation, tell them uh, Kerry Means in here. Matter of fact, if anybody's ever in the Atlanta area, check out Neighborhood Studios. Neighborhoodstudios.com. It's Bob Carter, the voice of Shao Kahn from Mortal Kombat 9. Okay. As well as Balrog from Street Fighter. Time to get paid! <laughs> and amongst many other, 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 other VOs, this guy has his own studio and he teaches people how to get into the business. So check out NeighborhoodStudios.com or visit Neighborhood Studios in North Cross, Georgia and tell them Frylock sent you. There you so go. a little plug for Bob that's Carter there. That's a nice little plug. <laughs> Did you ever do any recording with George Lowe? Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. What, Space Ghost himself? Yeah. Oh, Papa George. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I saw him at Dragon Con recently. Oh, cool. But, yeah, me, me and George... Uh, well, I was in the studio at Doppler, which is closed now, by the way. Doppler is a place where we recorded about 90% of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. They, they closed for whatever reason about a year ago. Oh. But anyway, uh, I was in there listening to George do his Homer Simpson impersonation. But the very first episode of the very last season of Aqua Teen, it was kind of like a robot chicken thing. We were like claymated. claymated yes, yes. Claymation 4. And uh, the guy from Rick and Morty was the guest voice. 
That's right. He was a beef jerky mascot. Yeah. They were have an adventure right now with robots and lasers. <laughs> so um, Meatwad loses his mouth, and he tries on these different miles, and one of them is Homer Simpson. And I can hear George just nailing Homer Simpson impersonations over the over the phone, you know, over the voice pad. Beef, beef, beef jerky, no. <laughs> so, you know, he does a better homework than I do. No, that was good. Obviously. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I like Homer, you know. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, I wish we could have got a run like the Simpsons out of Aqua Team, boy. That'd be nice. I mean, yeah. Be on the air. Talk about a long run for a show. You you ain't kidding. <laughs> All right, like SpongeBob, too. I mean, uh, Tom Kenny just takes money baths. He's just wiping his butt with $500 bills, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> down the toilet. <laughs> So wait, are you saying are you saying that the royalties are better on a show that's on Nickelodeon than the one that's on Adult Swim, or is it, is it something different? That... I'm saying uh, I'd like to trade paychecks with Tom Kenny any day of the week. Okay, <laughs> is, it, is that because it was a? I'm saying that you know when I do cons and I love to do them. You might see me at a con near you if yeah. you're listening to this. But anyway, when I do them, I, a lot of parents come up to my table and they go, you know, I won't let my kids watch SpongeBob. It's too adult. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've actually heard people tell me that. I was like, "Well, it does kind of have some undertones or overtones." I don't want to say it to it, you know, but everything does really. Well, that yeah. You know, there's suggestion, and then there's hitting something directly on the nose. So those parents should watch Adult Swim. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. No, no. I, I mean, I've had nine and ten year olds come up to my table. And say, hey, I watch that show. Oh, like, How old no. you, son? I'm I'm ten. Oh, man. <laughs> this kid was dressed as Rick Sanchez at the New York Comic Con last year. I was lucky and blessed enough to squeeze in on the vendor's floor. Made a little money, too. And uh, this kid comes up to the table dressed as Rick Sanchez, 10 years old. He does the old Macaulay Culkin, you know, the the, the Home Alone expression. Yes. Bah! It's Frylock. I mean, he's like wet himself. He's just really it's so excited to be Frylock. I'm like, how old are you, son? I'm 10. Where's your mom? Right here. <laughs> Naughty mommy, naughty. Nah, I wag my finger at mommy. It's like, so how weird this is boy that? Is younger than my show was older than this kid. Yeah, you know. What I'm saying? Well, how and weird? He's like geeking out over me and Frylock, and I'm like, oh my god, I've been corrupting America's youth for a decade and a half. Yes, I have. <laughs> so was that weird, or is that were you proud of that, or, or how did that feel? All of the above. Yeah, oh. weird, proud. Just you know, people have come up to me and saying I've got them out of some of the toughest times in their lives, man. That's awesome. That. Makes me proud. That makes me proud. Who knew lots of floating french fries with laser eyes would have such a profound effect? You know, that's very the, true. P- there, that, certain individuals. There's a staying power in animated shows, I think, you know, or in TV in general. But I think there's a real staying power that people bond with it, you know? I concur. <laughs> that's, that's what made me want to do it. Oh, okay. That's what made me want to do it. You know, like I said, growing up on Looney Tunes, cartoons and stuff like that. Jerry Lewis movies, uh, Three Stooges. All that. All the classics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All the classics. Yeah, that's awesome. March Brothers, Law and Hardy. Well, in keeping with the box of French fries theme going, I sent you a little bit of uh, writing from an ad, a 1950s magazine ad. Uh, that you did. For Crisco and, and making French fries. And if you don't mind, I would love to hear a little bit of Frylock reciting this old ad. Chris likes Crisco fried foods are so digestible, you can eat them seven days a week. New medical tests prove it. Yes, new tests and nutrition experts prove that foods fried light and right in Crisco are as completely digestible as if baked or boiled. Look at crispy brown potatoes fried in Crisco or taste the delicate flavor of Crisco fried chicken. Crisco fried foods taste so right, you'll know they'll sit right and be easy to digest. So fry away and fear no more. Use Crisco for fried foods. You can eat seven days a week without a worry. Use Crisco. It's digestible. <laughs> That's great. That was great. What a strange ad, hey, too. My mom used Crisco, so I know. Oh, there you go. <laughs> she used to buy it by the tub, maybe. If you have to tell somebody that your food is digestible, it almost is like, why are you... <laughs> why are you reminding... I read the last word like that. Yeah. It's digestible. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> not like that lard you're using. Yeah. That's not digestible. <laughs> Yeah. Use this instead. Yeah. It's don't... only half lard. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, A third less of the lard. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I kind of miss those old ads. Remember, kids, 
<laughs> if you see a big flash outside, there's a nuclear bomb. Stop, drop, and roll. Duck and cover. That's yes. it. Duck and cover. Yes. Duck I, and cover. You know what? Desks. When I was looking up this ad today, I actually came across some old commercials for Lay's potato chips from like the 60s. The actor that played the Cowardly Lion was doing them. If you ever have a chance to look those up, they're, what? Really, they're so funny. Yeah. Yeah. They're really funny. Wow. Those old commercials where people did product placements like that, it's very different now, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, Carrie, thank you so much for hanging out with me today here and uh, and talking with all of us and, and, of course, doing a little bit of Frylock for everybody at home. I really appreciate that. Hey, thank you, Mr. Maki. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, you tell the Don, I said, uh, forget about it, okay, the thing that I did for him that time. No worries. Hey, I'm walking right. here. Hey, you'll be sleeping with the fishes in no time. Hey, 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 hey. yeah, yeah. Forget about it. Huh? Hey, hey, whatever. You, you know. talk to you talk to uh, the fly man here. Hey, what? Yeah, now, now I'm going into a little Carl there, a little Carl, yeah, a little bit uh, of Carl. Yeah. <laughs> I can do a little Peter. <laughs> uh, there you, you know, go. That, that's that's a friend of mine too, Rob Francis. He's a real life Peter Griffin. Oh, nice. Yeah, he, he's a buddy of mine. I know you've seen his stuff. Oh yeah. As a matter of fact, the chicken fight. I narrated the chicken fight. Look, look, look on my, I got a YouTube channel too. I got like 17, 18 subscribers. Well, hey, that's. Feel free to subscribe to yeah. my YouTube channel. Yeah, so. If you want. So for everybody listening, the best way for them to find you right now would be on your YouTube channel or what else? Social media, Instagram, Facebook. All right. Just look for the logo with my face and Thunder Crease and Frylock in the background on the Excellent. blue background. That means. Thank you so much for coming and doing this. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'll, I'll make Peace, sure I. Love and extra hot fried grease. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you. Take care. Peace. That was the end credits theme to Aqua Teen Hunger Force, composed and performed by rapper Schooly D. About six years into the series' run, a controversy regarding drummer Terence Yerves arose regarding his supposed involvement in creating the theme. Yerves, demand, Yerves' demands included $150,000 for every episode aired since he filed the claim in 2006, the removal of the series from broadcast, and an impound on the DVDs. The results of that lawsuit were not disclosed, but it's safe to say the change in show title and theme song in later seasons is a pretty good indication. At the very least, it seems like a nod by the series creators. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Special thanks go out to Carrie Means once again for joining us here on the show. Thanks so much to all of you also listening in live on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you would like to support Stay Tuned and listen anytime, why don't you join me over on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash philmaki to become a subscriber today. Not only are there cool rewards, but you can also stream this show anytime you like, which means never missing an episode. For more fun, check out my original comics at RetailSunshine.com and you can interact with me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook under the handles of both Retail Sunshine and Phil Maki. Also, you can keep up to date with the latest animation news by visiting this show at Facebook.com forward slash Stay Tuned Show. I've been Phil Maki. you've been a wonderful audience, and until next time, keep those eyeballs peeled, those french fries in their cups, and be sure to stay tuned. <laughs>